Let's give the Lord some praise and thanksgiving. I'm so glad to see everyone of you here. We had a we had a really amazing week, and I know this we're t- changing time right now, so we're gonna have a packed house out a, a packed out house on, at 11 o'clock. But I'm so glad you're here. Amen. You woke up early, and praise God, that's awesome. You're putting God first in your week, and 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 this is a decision. And anytime you put God first, there's a there's a promise that God says, if you just seek me first. I'll add everything to you. And I, so basically what it's saying is, is life is all about prioritizing. And what you, what, you are, what you know is a priority in your life is what you do. You make time for, you sacrifice for, and that's what you're doing today. But if you do that, and I want you to know that, that God will begin to add everything to you. Because to God, the most important thing is that you have, that you have decided to have a relationship with him. And what he wants, he just doesn't want to be part of your life. He wants to be the greatest thing in your life. And if you do that, this is what he's saying. I'll add everything to you. I'll add the peace to you. I'll add the strength to you. I'll give you eternal life. I'll help you with your kids. I'll help you with your marriage. Just prioritize. Put me first. And today, you've done that. Give yourself a hand. That God, you know, God's doing something in your life today. And everyone online that's tuning in. That's awesome. So this last week, we had some great things happening. We just did our wild jam. We had a great volunteer um, group that showed up. Thank you guys for volunteering. Thank you for giving. And we reached a lot of people. Right now, we got 20 single single moms that we reached from the outreach are having breakfast today in one of our rooms. Our, our downtown campus is getting ready, and many people got baptized. They're going to be showing up for the first time in church their whole lives. They're showing up with their families at our downtown campus at 11 o'clock. That's awesome. This week, we launched out our first Bible study in Compton. And, and the police even came by to check us out. Because they're not used to Bible studies. They're used to, like, gang banging and parties and stuff like that. So the police rolled up on our Bible study and said, what's up? You guys partying? And then Gabriel said, no, we're doing Bible study. They go, oh, we never heard of that. And then also one of the guys that, that's been notorious in the neighborhood, um, uh, one of the gang members, he got saved this week. A guy no one ever thought would be saved. He got saved. He's like the biggest trouble in the hood. So what did what we did. We went to the toughest hood. We found the worst house, and we found out he lived there. There's drive-bys in that house. He got shot last month. And and and. And while they were, while he was, while Gabriel was witnessing to him, somebody came by. One of the guys that was his enemies turned the car around, and get, and the guy saw me. He goes, "Oh, come on, let's go inside. Let's go inside." He takes Gabriel inside, and and he just all of a sudden brings out a gun with a clip. Right there in the Bible study, it was just he was trying to. Wait. He isn't not saved yet. He was getting saved. <laughs> he goes, "That's he goes that guy's an enemy because." I shot his brother, and his brother is brain dead right now. And I know he's coming to kill me. I've been looking for him. He's been looking for me. It's just who kills who first. This is where I'm at. So Gabriel spent two, three hours with him. He gave his life to Jesus. And and this is our first Bible study. He really gave his life to Jesus. And we knew he gave his life to Jesus because then we went to Imperial Courts, which is, is... uh, in Watts, and when Gabriel showed up there, one of the guys, the OG, said, hey, what's up, pastor? And Gabriel said, well, how does he know about me in Watts now? Well, that guy told that guy, another leader of a gang over there in Watts, hey, there's a church here. I just gave my life to Jesus. His life's being transformed. So let's give the Lord a hand. Come on, people are getting saved. They're being transformed. We are discipling them. Right now, in classes here, our classes are full. We got Holy Warriors 1 right now, full class overflowing. We got Holy Warriors 2. People are being disciple right now, getting set free and learning how to follow Jesus. Our Africa team just got back this week. What, what happened? I'm just telling you, this is what happened this week. We opened, we opened two women, women's homes over there. The girls, the prostitutes that were delivering, that were rescuing off the streets when they went into the house they just started crying 
because the house that we acquired for them is in the nicest neighborhood in the whole city. And they're now living in a beautiful house. They couldn't believe it that they started praise dancing and singing and crying all because of what God's doing here in San Bernardino. Thank you guys so much. We just launched out in, in Kenya, a young adults ministry right there, right there in the area that they have a college. 81, 81 young adults came to church for the first time last Sunday. We just launched out our women's ministry over there, our discipleship ministry. That's just one week. And Robert just came back from, from, from um, Mexico this week. Robert preached out there in Mexico. They have now, they just, they just started doing their, their, their discipleship groups, their P12 groups. They now have 17 P12 groups. People are getting saved in neighborhoods that they thought would never be saved. It's, it's just, some, there, there's complex, uh, apartment complexes that they're adopting and the whole complex is giving their lives to Jesus. Uh, this has just happened this week. Let's give the Lord a hand for what God's doing. Come on, in your church right now. And that's what it's all, that, that's what it's all, all that matters is people are getting saved and they're, they're being discipled by a whole bunch of regular people like us. And all the offerings that you're giving and the, and the serving and, and the sacrifices that you're making. And I know you're going through trials and difficulties, but God is saying, keep putting me first and I'll make sure I add everything to you. Come on, how many know if we, if we just put God first, God will fix all the rest of the stuff. Glad you're here. Glad you're here. We're going to be starting a, a new series in these next few weeks before Easter because I want to make sure that we understand the core message of the Bible, which is the good news. Um, last week we talked about go, go, go. And one of them, go with the mission, make disciples. Go with the message, the good news. And go with the method, invite people. And we're going to continue doing that. And Easter is going to be a great opportunity. People go to church on Easter. So we're going to invite them. And they're going to come. And they're going to receive Jesus as their Lord and Savior. We're going to write down five names that you're believing God for. I want you to do your part. Write down five names of God. These are the five names I want you to touch. And it's amazing. I see it every Easter. You write down names and God starts touching those people. And all God is saying, I just need a little, ex little faith from you guys. And I'll do the rest. Write some names down. Invite them to come to church. I guarantee it's going to be awesome. They're going to experience God's love. And, and many of them are going to get saved. And this is going to be their Easter that they're going to say. They're going to get a personal resurrection in their lives. How many believe in that something's going to happen this Easter that's never happened before? So we're, going to, we're not just going to go through this season. We're going to be intentional. We're going to go to war. We're going to win some souls for Christ. If you're here for the first time, I got the, the message that we talk about is called a good news message. Because no matter where you're at, God loves you and he wants to have a wonderful, he wants you to have the life he's intended for you to have. The Bible talks about there's a devil that's out to kill, steal, and destroy. But Jesus says, I've come to give you life in abundance. And, and I love this because what he's saying is there is an option. You don't need to continue living in the deep depression, in the deep hopelessness, under the spirit of suicide and addiction. You could have a new life. And Jesus is offering it for you today. And that's what happened yesterday. People are giving their lives to Jesus. That's what's happening in Africa. That's what's happening in Mexico. That's what's happening in San Bernardino. Today could be your day of a new beginning, no matter where you are. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you for the wonderful things that you're doing and continuing to do. And you brought us together as a, as a family. We're humbled and we're grateful for what you're doing through regular people like us. And I thank you, Lord, for everyone that's got saved this week and getting baptized, even today. And with, I thank you for every person that's here and online. We're growing together. Speak to us today. Father, we want to hear your word, and we also want to understand it. And if there's anything we need to apply, we want to do that too. Help us to do that. Jesus, speak through me today. I need your help. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You may be seated. Awesome. Jesus saved me. Okay, let's talk about first 
God's plan. What is God's plan for our lives? And, and when, if I was going to talk about this message of salvation, I, I really needed to ta- start with the beginning. Like, what was God's original plan for mankind, for every single one of us? And if I would know that, then I could know what he wants to restore in my life or what he wants to save me to or save me from. God has a plan for your life. Um, and, and this is what happened. God has this wonderful plan. And many of you know about this. There was a fall from that plan. As soon as man, the first man, Adam, did it his way, this is what happened. There was a death to that plan of God in his life. So let's go back to the original, right there, first, the first book of the Bible in Genesis. And let's see what God's plan was. God's plan, number one, is for us to be like him, be with him, and to be blessed by him. So his plan was for us to be like him. Say it with me. Be like him, be with him, and be blessed by him. That it would be just a one-stop. Everything that we would need would be in that relationship with God. The farther we get away from being like God... And being with God, we want to be a godless society. We want, to ha- we want to do what we want to do. And the less we depend on God, the worse our society gets. But let's look at Genesis 1.27. It says this. So God created human beings in his own image. Just think about that. He didn't create us to be alcoholics. He didn't create us to be mean He didn't create us to be hateful. He didn't create us to be abusive. He didn't create us to be unforgiven. He didn't create us to be violent. He created us to be like him. He didn't create us to be weak. He didn't create us to be defeated. He created us to be just like him. He didn't create us to be sick. He created us to be healthy like him. God created human beings in his own image. In verse 28, it says, Then... God blessed them and said, be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and govern it. Reign over the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, and all the animals that scurry along the ground. And he's saying, now I'm going to bless you with ability. I want you to be fruitful. I want you to be productive. I want you to fill the earth. I don't want you to be unproductive. I want you to be productive. I want you to fill the earth. I want you to govern. That means I want you to be in charge. I don't want you to be subdued by the things of this world. What he's saying is everything I've created on this earth, I want you to rule over it like I rule over it. I don't want you to be, I don't want the anger to rule over you. I don't want the drugs to rule over you. I don't want worry to rule over you, anxiety to rule over you. I want you to rule over every single thing that I created. I created you to be like me. So this is what he's saying. So he first thing is that God wants us to be like him. God wants us to be with him. And then God wants us to be blessed by him. That everything we'd ever need will be found in that relationship with God. The second part of the plan is God's plan for every one of us is for good. God's plan is for good. You, it's important for you to know that because some people are blaming God for the bad in their lives. And God, God, and God is saying, the bad is not my plan. The good is my plan. Well, how do we know that? In Genesis 1.31, it says, Then God looked over all he had made, and he saw that it was very good. The first thing that God did was put God, put man in a, not just a good environment, he put them in a very good environment. He looked at everything he created, and then he goes, man, it's very good. It was very, say it with me, very good. It wasn't very bad. It wasn't so-so. It was very good. So God's, God's plan for your life is not just good. He wants you to have a very, very good life. So he, put, he creates everything. He looks at it and goes, it's very good. And he puts man in the middle of all his creation. Very good. So that word good means this. It's a, it's a Hebrew word, tov. And he goes, it's the best. So God wants the best for you. It means excellent. 
free from distress and pain, healthy, beneficial, morally excellent, happiness, joy, peaceful, prosperous, kindness. So he created man and he put him in this prosperous environment. There was no, in that environment, there was nothing bad. That means there was no harm, there was no sickness, there was no depression, there was no failure, there was no suicide, there was no mental illness, there was no suffering, there was no death, there was no war, there was no poverty, no heartbreak, no divorce, no, no death, no worry, no fear, no anxiety, no stress, because there was no sin. It was all very good. And the reason I want you to know this is because this is God's plan for your life. God wants you to have a very good life. And, and I'm very careful how I teach this because I'm using scripture. I'm not just making up stuff because there's almost a spirit out there that will make you start thinking, well, you know, um, what, is, what kind of teaching is this? This is teaching from the Bible. This is God's plan for your life. And how can you have faith if you don't believe that God wants you to have a very good life? The enemy would love to deceive you and make you think a good life is not for you. Maybe it's for someone else, but not for you. When God created man, do you think heaven's going to be okay or I see, I see, or not so good? When you get to heaven, no one's going to say, how's heaven? All right. You're going to be said, ah, oh, no words can describe this thing. And this is the kind of life that God wants you to have. Then when people are asking you, how is it serving God? I know I'm going through trials. I know I'm going through difficulties. But there's a strength that I have within me that's given me the power, that's given me the joy in this time. And I, I'm just to tell you, it's a really very, very good life when we do it God's way. So let's continue reading about this good life. See, God declares his plan for good. And it's a promise in Jeremiah 29, 11, maybe you're not convinced yet that God wants his plan is for good for you. In Jeremiah 29, 11, it says this, for I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. So God is saying, I have thoughts, I got plans for you. It's an individual thing. Maybe you say this, God has a plan for me. Right now, you might be going through a trial, you might be going through a difficulty, but don't you stop in the middle of it. God's taking you to a good place. Can you believe that God's taking you to a good place? It's not going to end where you're at. God's taking you somewhere. And if you follow him, you're going to end up in a really good place. So the scripture said, God declares his plan for it. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans. They are thoughts for good and not evil to give you a future and a hope. Now this word good, the first word good I, I, I described to you or I, I defined for you, and it was, it was a Hebrew word, tob. This next word, good, is a Hebrew word, shalom. It means peace. It means health. See, I got plans for peace, for health, for friendship, happiness, completeness, soundness of mind, contentment, peaceful and loving relationships, Freedom from war. You know what this is describing? This is describing heaven. And what God is saying, you can have this lifestyle that I had for Adam. You can have it right now because the same life I gave to Adam is available for you through faith in Jesus Christ. God wants your life to be good. Say it with me. God wants good for me. So he wants some tobe and he wants some shalom. Right? And if God wants it and that's his plan, this is what I'll do. Lord, your will be done. On earth the way it is in heaven. If that's where you, what you want from me, I'll let you lead me there. Let's continue talking about God's plan for good. God promises, look at this promise, that if we love him and follow him, he'll work everything out for good for us. He said, if you'll just prioritize me and you'll love me and you'll follow me, I guarantee you this. I make a promise. I will cause everything in your life to work together for good. I love that. There's a promise here. If I'll just have a relationship with God, 
and if I'll put my faith in Jesus Christ and follow his teachings and live according to his purpose, God is saying, I promise you this, I'll cause every single trial, every single difficulty, every single heartache, every single struggle, and I'll turn it around for good. I'll work it out. Someone's depressed in here because they didn't know that. And this is, it's important that we go through scripture because God is saying he'll do it. Stop trying to do it. Your job is just to love God and follow him. God's plan is for good. See, God promises that if we love him and we follow him, he'll work everything out for good for us. In Romans 8, 28, look at this. And we know, say it with me, we know with great confidence that God, who is deeply concerned about us, God cares about you. Uh, the creator of the universe is deeply concerned about you. Details matter to him. He loves you so much and he's so aware of everything that you're going through that the Bible says that the hairs on your head are numbered. You know what that means? He knows you better than you know you. Do you know how many hairs you got on your head? Well, maybe this morning you had more than you do right now. That's what's happening to me. But the idea here is, is that God is concerned about you. He's concerned about your, the details in your life. It's time to build up some faith in that God that has a plan for good in your life. Trust them. And we know with God, great confidence that God, who is deeply concerned about us, look at this, causes, God causes all things to work together as a plan. Someone say as a plan. Here goes the plan again. I told you in Jeremiah 29, 11, I got a plan for good and not evil and hope in a future for you. But we go into the New Testament and the plan is still in action. Causes all things to work together as a plan for good for those who love God and those who are called according to his, his plan and purpose for those whom he foreknew and loved and chose beforehand. You're not a mistake. God loves you. He's concerned about you. And he's saying, if you'll just love me back, I promise you this, and you'll just live out my purpose for your life and my plan for your life. I guarantee you this. I will work everything out for good. You don't have to stress. You don't have to worry. You just have to follow me and trust me. I'm working it out for good. I love this. For those who for, he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son. We see the, the purpose again. The purpose is that we be like him. The purpose is that we, that, that we be like him, that we be with him. And then the purpose is, after we be with him, when it's all said and done, what was the last one that, that we, we uh, or blessed by him? How many know God wants to bless you? So we see this still in the New Testament. Be with me. Be like me. Be like my son, Jesus Christ. And I guarantee you this. I'll cause everything to work out for good for you. See, don't be like the devil. Be like Jesus. So what do you mean be like that? Now, this promise does not work if you're acting like the devil. Say, well, how do I love God? This is how you love God. Obey him. I love God. See, we got too many people that say they love God and they don't obey him. And then they're wondering why things aren't working out because you're doing it your way. You love yourself and you love your habits, and you love your sins so much, you can't allow God to work in your life. There has to be a time that you're saying, I love God more than the temptation. I love God more than the sin. I love God more than the lying. I love God more than an adulterous affair. I love God more than alcohol. I love God more than weed. I love God, come on, I love God more than my anger. I'm tired of being like the devil. And I know if I'm like the devil, I'm not going to get God's work, come on, get God's results. But if I just could make a decision, I'm done with loving those things of the world, and I want to begin to love God. God is saying, if you'll 
love me. I got a plan for you. I'll make you like me. And if you allow me to make you like me, I promise I'll work every single thing out for your good. I promise my plan, my action, my intent will come to pass. God, God is saying, I promise you, I'll cause it out, all of it to work out for good. Don't get distracted by your haters. And the reason I say that, there's people that hurt you, and then you get, like, revengeful. Like, you can start going back into gang banging. You start going back into holding on to anger, revenge, and God's saying, here we go. That's not my plan. I can't work it out for good if you keep uh, come short circuit and allowing the devil's plan to be in your life. It's time for us to stay on God's plan so we can start getting God's results. Come on, give God some praise. So he goes, I'll work it out for someone to say good. In the New Testament, that word is agathos. It means I'll work it out for joy, happiness, for our benefit and for his honor, for our well-being. I'll work it out. It'll produce moral excellence or it'll begin to change your character. It'll work out for health and it'll work out for prosperity. If you could get this basic teaching that if you just follow Jesus, live for him, trust his way over your way, God is saying, I'll work it all out for good. And you could have a peace and a strength in the middle of your storm knowing I know it's going to work out for good. Why aren't you tripping? Why aren't you angry? Why aren't you upset? Because I already know how it's going to turn out. Why would I be all upset if I already know how it's going to turn out? It's going to turn out for good. How many are starting to believe that God has a plan for your life? Now, God warned Adam that if he chose sin over him, it would result in the death of all that good. Death to the good life. Death to the relationship with him. Death to the peace, to the joy, to the freedom. Death to the physical body. And also it'd be spiritual death. So in Genesis 2.15, God puts Adam in this 100% very good atmosphere. God blesses him. He, he gives him the power to be like him. He gives him the power to be fruitful, to reign, to govern. I put you in a position to be like me and steward what I've given you. And everything that I created on earth, I put under your authority. So you'd rule. But be careful, Adam. There's one thing that could cause a death to this amazing life that you have. And let's look at Genesis 2.15. The Lord God placed a man in the Garden of Eden to tend and watch over it. He goes, so I put you in a perfect environment to tend and watch over it. But the Lord God warned him, you may freely eat the fruit of every tree in the garden. When God put Adam and Eve in that garden, they didn't have to wait 10 years for fruit trees to grow, he placed them right there in their mature state. So the mango tree had mangoes. The watermelon was flowing on the vine. The orange tree had oranges. The apple tree had apples, apples. Grapes. Uh, every single tree was bearing fruit. And God says, Eat of all of them. I did it for you. But there's one tree that I don't want you to eat of because if you choose that tree, it would be like you choosing that over me. And I've created you to have freedom of choice. And I want to have a relationship with you. I created you to be like me, to be with me, and to be blessed by me. That you would look at me as your source of blessing. That you'd want to be like me that you'd want to love me, that you would choose me. I want you to choose me. And there was an offer. He goes, don't eat. Look at it says. Look what it says here. It says, it says, but the Lord God warned him, 
You may freely eat of the tree of every tree in the garden, fruit of every tree in the garden, except the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. If you eat of his tree, you are sure to die. Now, we know the story that the devil comes and he does, he does a sales pitch on the tree. It's a, maybe an infomercial late at night. Have you ever like, stayed up at night and you go for those infomercials? Those things do miracles. I mean, you literally don't have to work out. All you need is just to get that little machine. It, you put the things right here and just juggle your fat around. You lose like 30 pounds. No exercise, nothing. Well, Sane was doing one of those infomercials. And then he said, hey, you see the tree? She goes, yeah. He goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're not supposed to eat of that tree. He goes, really? He goes, you can't eat another tree? She goes, no, 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 no. No, God said we can't eat of the, we can eat all the trees. We just can't eat of that one because if we eat of that tree, we'll die. And then he said, no, 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 no. You ain't going to die. You're going to be good. You could, you could smoke that, drink that, tote that. You could put it in, you could, you could slam that, you could touch that. You could do whatever you want. It won't affect you. You won't be an addict. You won't go to prison. It won't mess with your marriage. It won't mess with your mind. You'll be all good. Don't worry about it. You won't die. It won't affect you. You'll still be able to live the good life and the sin. And you might be thinking, man, if I was Adam, there's no way I would have I took it. I wouldn't have took it. I promise I wouldn't have took it. But you're taking stuff right now. And you got all kinds of proof around you from your mama, from your uncle, from your neighbors that it don't work. But yet you're still touching it. Yet you're still drinking it. Yet you're still, come on, you're still toking it. Yes, you're still slamming it. And you're, one, you're still involved in looking at it. And God is saying, you're thinking just like Adam. You think that you could go ahead and sin and you won't die. So God told Adam, look, I'm telling you, you have this good life. And I got a plan for good for your life. But if you eat of that tree, for sure, this is going to die. Your joy is going to die. Your peace is going to die. You don't even know about that because all you know is peace. All you know is joy. All you know is victory. All you know is prosperity. All you know is abundance. All you know is fruitfulness. All you know that everything you do turns into gold. But I'm telling you, if you go ahead and live a sin life and you choose the tree over me, it's going to destroy your relationship with me. The, my blessing will no longer be on you. And you're going to start experiencing death to the good. That's what we're at as a society. We want to eat of the tree, but we still want to have the good life. We don't. So now, this is what happens. God warned them. And what did he do? He ate of it. And the Bible says that after he ate of the tree, what happened to Adam and Eve? They were actually removed from the garden. You can't be in this atmosphere anymore of very good. He goes, now it's going to be hard because now you're going to, there's going to, you allowed sin into the world. You allowed death into the world. You allowed death into your bloodstream. You allowed death into your family. You allowed a penalty to be over your life because of the decision that you made. Wow. Listen to what the Bible says in the New Testament. Look at it says. It says, it says that sin always results in death. In Romans 6, 23, it says this, for the wages of sin is, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. So God promised Adam, if you eat of the tree, you'll surely, and now he, he warns us. I want you to know there's no such thing as doing it your way without death. Sin always comes with death. Like hamburger comes with fries. Something like that. For the wages of sin is death. Now, that word death, I just taught, gave you definitions of good. How many want good? That's God's plan. But death, is, is a, it's, it sounds bad in Greek. Thanatos. It sounds like evil. Thanatos. It's like, like one of those movies. Thanatos. It means the separation of the soul of a man 
from God and his blessings. I want you to know that they were connected to God. Adam and Eve were connected to God, but once they sinned, they were disconnected. Their soul and spirit were disconnected from the source of joy, the source of peace, the source of life, and now it's, it was like a branch that was disconnected from the vine. They wouldn't die immediately, but they would begin to die. Something happened when they sinned. They started realizing they were naked. They felt guilt. They felt shame. They felt fear. Something changed in their lives. Something died. And it was their relationship with God. The word thanatos also means the misery of the soul arising from sin, which begins on this earth and increases after death of the body in hell. So sin always leads to misery on this earth. I talked to a young lady yesterday that asked for a ride. I don't know what's going on, but people just ask me for rides all over the place. I was like on the north side of the city, and I don't even know why she's looking at my car. I was just pulling into a little, little, little mart on a corner to get some gum, and I'm pulling into the parking spot. This girl rushes on my car, and she says, can you give me a ride? I go, where? I want to make sure I wasn't taking it to her drug dealer. She goes, I'm going to church. I go, that's where I'm going. So she was planning to come to our event at the downtown. That's the craziest thing. I go, okay, let's go. But I began, she began to share her story, and she's a meth addict on the streets. She's homeless. She has a seven-year-old child, and she cannot be her mother because she's choosing sin, which only produces death. I began to talk to her about God, and she told me, and there's a problem with sin, not only will sin kill you, sin will make you a slave. By the time we were done talking, she was telling me, I don't care what you tell me. If I want to smoke meth, I'm going to smoke meth, I'll sleep whoever I want to sleep with, do what I ever want to do. And if someone get, I could be a good friend to you, but, if, but, but don't you cross me because I'll be your worst enemy. That's who I am, and I don't want nobody to change me. She got out of my car and walked down the street with her sin. Walked down the street with her death. Walked down the street without her daughter or with her, her baby. Walked down the street without God, walk down the street without a blessing, walk down the street headed for hell, miserable, depressed, and angry because sin always leads to death. But I got good news for you. Jesus came to save us from this death that sin caused. I know it's early morning, but this is some serious issues. Death. It also means the loss of a life devoted to God. Deepest darkness, depression, fear, emptiness, bondage. Deepest depression. And this is what it means. When you're not living for God and you refuse, you just want to do it your way. This is what happens. You might be a little depressed today, but your depression is going to increase. You might be a little fearful today, but later on it's going to turn to severe anxiety. You might have a little unforgiveness and bitterness today. But if you continue down that path, you're going to become a very, very angry person because it increases. You might feel like, I'm empty today. I do know this. That unless you get back to the God life, this is what's going to happen. You're going to feel more and more empty. And I love you, and I want you to experience the life that God has for you. But this is the worst thing. is not only are you living it, but you're going to pass it on to the next generation. You might be hearing the little voices today, but, and it sounds like a whisper right now, and you know there's a war within you, but if you don't fight that voice and say, God, I want to serve, serve you, I'm tired of hearing that voice and giving into it, it's going to be louder and louder in your mind until it takes over your mind and you lose your mind. Right now you're thinking, well, I'm just having a good time. I understand this. There's going to be a day that thing takes over your life. It's no longer going to be a good time you're going to be a slave to it, and you won't be able to kick it. 
because it gets worse. It gets worse. Look at this. Death. Death. It means the loss of a life devoted to God. It means deepest darkness, deepest depression, deepest fear, emptiness, bondage, loneliness, anguish, homelessness, deception, loss, pain. And this death can turn into eternal death. Sin leads to misery today. But it also leads to eternal death. This is not God's plan for your life. This is the devil's plan for your life. This is the devil selling you on an info commercial, telling you you could have a good time, you could give in to that temporary pleasure, and things are going to still be okay with you. But the reality is it's leading to death. It's ruining your life. But God loves you enough to warn you, just like he warned Adam, you could choose to walk away from that death life and that death cycle, and you could call on Jesus, and he's the only one that can save you. But I want you to look at this. It's crazy. This is the future. The ultimate death is the second death. We're all going to die once. Our physical bodies will expire. But those that have received Christ really never die. They just change addresses and they go into eternity with the Lord. They just go into the full good life just like Adam had on earth. No pain, no suffering, no death, no sickness, no growing old, nothing. It's all good. But look at this. In Revelations 21.8, crazy. But cowards, and I want you to think about future friends, future relatives, or it could be you, because you've not surrendered your life to Jesus yet. But cowards, unbelievers, the corrupt, murderers, they're moral, those who practice witchcraft, idol worshipers, and all liars. Their fate, in the, their fate is in the fiery lake of burning sulfur. This is the second death. This is what God was warning Adam about. And the reality is every single one of us has sinned. And God is a just God. You know what that means? That every sin must be paid for. It must be accounted for. But I got good, good news for you. That right now, God is offering you a new life. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And the life he's offering you is the full life that Adam lost. And he's saying, I've made a way for you to get that life back. I've made a way for you to be like me. I've made a way for you to be with me. And I've, I, I, come on, I've made a way for I could, so I could bless you again. Does anybody want, come on, the good life that God offers? It's, it's, it's available. You can reject it or you can receive it. And the last part of God's plan is this. It's simple. God's perfect plan of salvation and restoration of this good life is received through believing in Jesus Christ alone. I love this. In John 3, 36, let's look at that scripture. He, look at this, who believes and trusts in the Son and accepts him as Savior has eternal life. Eternal life is what Adam had before he lost it. That is, already possesses it. You place your faith in Jesus Christ, the one that suffered and died and paid the price for every wrong thing that we've ever done. That means the price for sin or the wage for sin is death, but God sent his perfect son to live a perfect life on earth and take on all our punishment, take on all our penalty. And this is what he's saying. I paid the full price. And if I paid the full price, I could give you the full blessing. Does anybody want that exchange? I give him my sin. I give him my penalty. And he gives me forgiveness. And he gives me a new life. He gives me freedom. He gives me peace. He gives me joy. He gives me eternal life. He gives gives me the good life. And he says, if you follow me, I promise you this. I'll work everything out for good. Come on. Does anybody want to get back on the plan? How do we do it? We put our faith in Jesus. Look at this last verse. Continue reading that last verse. In John 3, 36. 
He who tr believes and trusts in the Son and accepts him as Savior has eternal life. That is, already possesses it. The moment I place my faith in Jesus Christ, God gives me eternal life. It's not something I earn. It's, something not, it's not something I'm going to get one day. I receive it the moment I place my trust in Jesus Christ. The good life is available for everybody here, but you do have an option. But he who does not believe the son and chooses to reject him and his offer, disobeying him, denying him as savior, will not see eternal life, but instead the wrath of God hangs over him continually. This is what it's saying, that there's people here that the wrath of God is over your head. That means your future is death, misery, suffering, emptiness, fear, addiction. It's going to get worse. And then hell for eternity because you choose to not believe and reject forget reject salvation and forgiveness but i got good news for you those that believe in jesus as their savior the price has already been paid stop trying to figure it out it's a free gift he did it all your job is simple he's knocking on your door the package is being delivered, open the door, and let the package in. How many ever order something on Amazon, and you get excited, you can't wait, is it here yet? Is it here yet? Well, I, I got good news for you. It's here. Salvation is here. Forgiveness is here. New life is here. The good life is here. Restoration is here. Freedom is here. Breakthrough is here. Victory is here. Eternal life is here. And God is saying, he's knocking on your heart's door. He said, all you got to do is believe that I'll, I'm your savior. And I'll save you. Today's your day. If you're saying, pastor, I've not been living a good life. I got good news for you. Jesus knows how to save people. And if you just call on him, he'll restore your life. You come the way you are. Stop trying to fix it. I don't even say this. Stop trying to fix you. Let God do it. He does a way better job. Like, that's like you bringing me your car and it's broken down and asking me to fix it. That'd be a very bad idea. But I guarantee you this, after I'm done with it, it'll be worse than ever. I don't know what I'm doing. I could barely put batteries in a little toy for my little grandson. <laughs> God knows how to fix your life. And he has a plan. It's always been for good. Your future is good. My future is good in the Lord. But if you're in this place and say, Pastor, I do need a new beginning. And I realize that I've done it my way and it's not working out for good. Okay. That's the first step. Because I need help. I need Jesus to save me. And if God wants me to have a good life, why wouldn't I want to receive it and say, God, I'll turn in my life and my will and my way to do it your way. He goes, just follow me. Just love me. And I promise you this, I'll work everything out for good. I don't know how it's going to happen. Your job is not to figure out how it's going to happen. Your job is just to follow the leader. It's going to work out. Choose a new leader today. Of course, there's going to be an exchange. You got to be willing to give up your way. Right? If you have unforgiveness, go ahead and forgive. How's that unforgiveness working for you? Just making you angry and bitter and crazy. I mean, all that. Full of jealousy. Forget about it. We, 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 we you think that you have this, you're like, you're an inspector and uh, uh, that you're a detective and you're going to find everything that they're doing. I promise you. I know. I know for sure. Uh, stop it. If they're cheating on you, God will expose that. You just live for God and straighten that thing out and God will take care. Revenge is his. He'll take care of it. Get your mind back on God. And if you're addicted today for some reason, bad habit, it could be a, a drug, it could be drinking, it could be an emotion, it's okay. Come to Jesus. He's a great physician. He's a great mechanic. And he's not here to judge you. He's here to save you if you just believe in him. Let's all stand up.
You guys are an awesome crowd. How many are receiving something from God today? All right, now, if you're saying, Pastor, that's me, and I, I want you to think about this. If, if you were to die today, is the wrath of God over your life continually? Like, is it, you like feel guilty, like something's over you. Let's get rid of that guilt. God does not want you guilty. And if there's like, man, I know there's judgment paid for my future. God says, I already paid the price for your judgment. Will you just trust in me? I loved you so much. I, I, was, I suffered. And we're going we're to go into that in this series. Jesus saved me. And we're going to go through what he paid. That's how much he loves you. This is how bad he wants a relationship with you. He wants to give you the power to be like him. And he wants to bless you. Will you allow the ultimate creator of the universe and ultimate blesser to bless you? Today's your day. Receive him or you can reject him. He's chosen you. Will you open your heart today? I'm going to count to three. Say, Pastor, and I want you to think about this. Think about this. If today were your last day on earth, do you know if you're saved? Or are you concerned that if I died right now, maybe I would die and end up in that super dark place in that lake of fire forever and ever and ever where there's no hope and there's no return. You only get one shot at this in your life. And the most important thing you could ever do is get reconnected your, with your creator to, by placing your faith in Jesus Christ. Jesus says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one gets to the Father but through me. Today's your day to place your faith in Jesus. a gift. Will you receive it? Receive forgiveness? Receive a new beginning? Receive eternal life? If I count on three, say, Pastor, I want to receive that gift. It takes a real man or woman to say yes. Today's your day. Don't let your neighbor press you into keeping your hand down. Give your life to Jesus. One, when I say three, I want to recommit my life to Jesus or I want to give my life to Jesus. I want to exchange my life for the good life that God has for me. When I say three, raise your hands. One, two, three. Raise your hands all over this building. Proud of you. Proud of you. Proud of you. Proud of you. Proud of you, honey. Proud of you. Anybody else over here? I, if you raise your hand over here, I didn't, I didn't get to see you over there. Okay. Awesome. I want those that raise their hands. This is a big step church. How, heaven is celebrating right now. Somebody's saying, I'm done with doing it my life way. I want to see God's will be done in my life. If you raise your hand, I want you to come up here real quick. Will you give me the honor and privilege to pray with you? I'm just, I'm just going to pray with you. While you're walking away from your seat, this is what you're saying. I'm walking away from my old life to follow Jesus, my new life. Ask your neighbor. If you want to go up there, I'll go up there with you. This is what I do know. If you don't take action, nothing changes. Today's your day to take action. If you feel like, man, I know I should be up there. Take the step. It's the greatest step you'll ever make. God, heaven, will, come on, heaven's proud of you. Your family will be proud of you. People are dependent on you because when you change, there's going to be a domino effect in your family. Come on, anybody else? Today's your day. I need to recommit. I want to give my life to Jesus. I want to be saved today. I want eternal life. I'm tired. I need the good life. I'm tired of the deep depression. I'm tired of the deep anxiety. I feel like it's getting worse today. Something's going to turn around if you allow God, come on, if you allow God to move you from a seat right up here. And I know it's only a few steps, but those few steps are saying, I'm surrendering my will to God. <coughs> awesome. Okay. Awesome. God bless you. What's your name? Hector? Let's give the Lord, Lord a hand for Hector. He's giving life to you. Proud of you, bro. Proud of you. Awesome. What's your name, sir? Richard. Come on. Richard surrendering his life to the Lord today. Ash. Anjanette. Anjanette, look, God loves you so much. This is your day. You'll never be the same again. He knows your pain. He knows your hurt. He goes, baby, I'm going to work it out for good. This decision is going to change your life, change your destiny, and change your family. Come on. Come on. There it goes. Love you. What's your name, baby? Huh? Denise is up here. How old are you, Denise? Denise is 16 years old. She's surrendering her life to the Lord. Awesome. What's your name, bro? Huh? Danny. Come on. Danny's giving his life to the Lord. Come on. Let's give the Lord a hand. God's a good God. We're going to pray right now. God is good. Awesome. What's your name, sir? Greg? Greg. Oh, Greg. Greg is surrendering. You know, Greg, Greg was sitting there, and he was like, I want to come on. He was like, I'm ready. I'm convinced. I need Jesus. Let's give Greg a hand. He, he's for... His life will never be the same after today. God has spoken to him. 
And today is his day to go all in. Come on. He's just saying, I'm ready. And today's his day. Let's pray. If you believe in your heart, right now in Jesus, you have eternal life. And this is what you're saying. I'm done doing it my way. I repent of my sins. And I'm going to follow Jesus. And if you do, you can start experiencing the good life that God has for you. Pray with me. Repeat after me. Say, Jesus, I thank you for loving me so much that you died on a cross. You suffered to pay the price for all my sins. And then you rose from the dead. You conquered death to give me a new life. Forgive me. Set me free. Make me new. I open my heart, Jesus. And I ask you now, come in and fill me with your spirit. Make me a new person. Today, I am reconnected to God. I receive the good life, eternal life that God has for me. In Jesus' name, I am saved. I'm born again. Amen. Let's give the Lord a big hand. God, let's give the Lord a big hand. Now, your next step, guys, we're going to pray with you. Your next step is to get baptized and then go to Holy Wars classes, membership class at the end of the month. It's going to be two weeks from now. Take the next step. We love you. We're going to make sure we connect with you. God bless you, church. If you need prayer, come on up. We'd love to pray with you about anything that you're going through. We love you. God bless you. Remember this, if God's for you, who can be against you? Really, it says 10.30, but it's really like 9.30. You guys, that's really what it is.